How do you add your logo or watermark in Luminar AI? That's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Here's a scenario you might be able to relate to because this has happened to me several times. So you've used your really expensive camera, your lens that knocks the background out into this beautiful artistic haze. You've analyzed the scene. You've thought that's the great place to put somebody with the lighting. You get your subject there and then use your charismatic charm to bring out this beautiful expression. And then you use your photography skill set to press the shutter at just the right moment to capture that awesome expression expression you then share it with this person and they use it as their profile pic on Facebook and straight away all the comments start rolling in wow this photo is fantastic you look gorgeous amazing stunning all of that good stuff and you're scrolling thinking I'm gonna get some credit here thanks Anthony took this one no they're just liking and saying oh thanks hmm maybe they put something in the description photo by what the f <laughs> Well, enough is enough, no more. I say it's time to add our watermark or logo onto our photos inside Luminar AI before we post them. If you don't have a logo yet, I've got a couple of options for you at the end of the video, one which is free and one which is a really nice professional option, but it's still really affordable. So stick around for those if you don't have one yet. But for now, let's look at the process of actually getting that logo onto our photo. You guys may recognize this landscape from the last edit I shared with you. And if you want to see more about photo editing in general, please subscribe to the channel. But let's see how we can actually add our logo. So currently we're assuming that you already have a logo. So what we need to do to add our logo is to come over to the local masking section. Click that and then we're going to come to add mask. Here what we want to do is come down to add texture. Now this may seem like a slightly odd way to go about adding a logo, but just trust me, we're going to load a texture. Now hopefully you're going to have a PNG version of your logo. If you don't, if you only have it as a JPEG, don't worry. But what a PNG is going to allow you to do is actually build transparency into the actual file. So the areas where your logo doesn't actually exist, it's going to be able to just knock those back into transparency. And so all you'll see when you load this in as a texture is your actual logo. Perfect. If your logo just exists as a JPEG, don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll look at that after this, okay? So we are going to come to load texture. As you can see from this folder here, I am no stranger to adding my logo to things. I've got different versions for my commercial work, my landscapes, my family portraits and weddings. But here we're just going to use my Anthony Turnham logo. And you can see that I have JPEGs as an option. Also Photoshop versions for if I want to actually make changes to my logo. But here we're going to add a PNG logo. And as I alluded to before, we actually have transparency built into these logos. So I have just plain white ones, one with a shadow drop on it, also a black version as well. But we're just going to add a white logo as a PNG. So I'm just going to double click this. Currently, we have an opacity of 50% and opacity is basically just the opposite of transparency. So my logo is far too big. So I'm going to come to the place texture option and that gives me control anchor points in each corner where I can actually grab the corner and now scale this down and I'm able to scale this to a size I feel is appropriate. And I certainly would not be placing the logo anywhere near the center of the frame. I'm more of a fan of bottom left or bottom right of the picture itself. If you put your logo right in the middle, I find that just a little bit old fashioned and also a little bit obnoxious as well. So just grab the corner, scale it down to a point where people can identify your work as yours, but the logo itself isn't interfering with the overall aesthetic of your image. Once you click place texture again, your logo is going to be positioned. And then when I come to export this photo at whatever size I want, that logo will be scaled appropriately and according to the settings I have in my export dialog box. If you want to reduce the opacity, obviously you're free to do that. And normally I like my opacity sat somewhere around that 50% mark. And I think that works quite nicely. But what if you don't have a PNG version of your logo? What do you do then? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered there so we can still get transparency providing you have either white or black within that JPEG. So let's come up here and we're going to add another texture. Come to your load texture dialog box here. And we are going to navigate this time to my landscapes logo and we'll select this one here. It's got a bit of color and it's also got white. So I'll be able to show you exactly how you can make that white element disappear. 
Okay, once again, I want to scale this down. So I'll do that by clicking place texture, grabbing one of the corner points and just bringing that in. Even if you scale it out of the canvas of the actual picture, we can just grab it and bring that back down here, bring it down a bit smaller. And now we come over and click place texture again, just to confirm that. Now you may want every pixel within your logo to show up and this would be a fine option for you. And as I showed you before, you can just play with the opacity so that you can have that show up in a stronger format or a lesser format, depending on what you're after. Now, if you don't have a PNG, the best option is to work with a JPEG that just has your logo in black and white only. And actually, there's a lot of evidence that supports the idea that a good logo should be able to stand up on its own in black and white without any color. But let's say we do have a bit of color here and we don't want it to interfere with the colors in the actual photo itself. All we need to do is come to the advanced settings and we can come to our blend mode. And the best thing to do for this instance is to come all the way down here to luminosity now if you're not familiar with blending modes don't stress it just think if you've got color that you want to get rid of you can come down to luminosity and luminosity is just another word for describing brightness so basically your brightest pixels will be the brightest elements and the dark pixels will drop back so in this case the darky blue purple drops back so we can select luminosity if you would like to know more about blending modes just write blending modes in the comments and i'll look at making a video dedicated to explaining what these modes do but for now i'm just going to tell you what options to use if you've got a logo that is just black and white let me show you how to work with that so we're going to come up to local mask and add a new texture. Double click the logo you want to use and again place the texture where you want to put it. So we're going to scale it down and just for demonstration purposes I'm going to leave it right over the sky here just so we can see it and you're going to be able to better see how the blending modes interact with this. So come to the advanced settings again, drop this down. So in this instance we have both black and white pixels in our JPEG. If you want just the white pixels to show up, the best option to do is just come down to lighten. And now we just have our white pixels showing. Again, we've got the option to crank the opacity up or drop it down. If you want the black pixels only to show up, then you're going to select darken. So come down here to darken. And now the white pixels have disappeared and we can just see the sky through that. My preference for my logos is to use them in the white mode. So I'm going to come back to lighten, drag it down here, scale it appropriately and close the texture panel down. Now, while that may not seem like the most logical way to actually apply a logo or your watermark to a photo, it's currently the only way inside of Luminar AI to do it. And it's pretty straightforward, really. If you want to, you can save the addition of your logo into a template inside of Luminar AI. But I find there is a bit of an annoyance with that. And that is that you may have many different templates and sometimes you want to apply certain templates, but for any export to Facebook or Instagram, you may want to apply your logo. So it would be a case of having two different templates for every single look that you have. One that's just the look on its own and one that is the look plus the logo as well. So I really feel that the developers at Skylum actually have a care of duty to us as users to make applying our logos and watermarks to our photos much easier to do and easier to apply them to a whole batch of photos. I do have another workaround that helps when you're actually batch processing photos and your logo onto all of those. So if you want to see me make a video on that, just let me know in the comments. That would be cool. So if you've already got your logo and you want to know how to apply it in Luminar AI, you're golden. I've, you don't need to watch anymore. But I did say if you didn't have a logo yet, I was going to show you how you can do that. So the first option you've got is the absolute budget option, and that's going with your signature. So. That's not my signature. <laughs> Maybe do a couple of test runs first. That's better. So you've got your signature. Then get your phone and just take a photograph of the piece of white paper and make sure your signature and the white fills the frame. Okay, signature. I'm now going to download this photo and bring it into Luminar. Okay, now we're going to come to add that signature. Okay, so the signature has been imported and it's on its side. So if you come to the Luminar AI logo here and we just come to image, rotate image, and we're going to rotate it to the left. Alternatively, just use the hotkey, control plus the left bracket key. 
Now, based on what I showed you before for working with black and white JPEGs, what we're gonna do is make the white pure white and make the black of the signature black or certainly close to it. So within the tool section, we're gonna jump straight into the light panel here. And in the advanced section, I'm gonna drop down the blacks and the whites. And I'm gonna start bringing up the white slider. I'm gonna push the highlights up as well and even bring the exposure up a bit just so that we're making sure that the white is pure white. Now by grabbing the blacks, I'm gonna pull that down and perhaps even the shadows could do with being pulled down a little bit too. And now I'm going to export this as a JPEG. So we're gonna save photo to disk. We really don't need this to be as large as this. So we're gonna change the long edge to be, let's say 1000 pixels. Make sure you stay organized and select somewhere appropriate to save your signature. I'll save mine in my logos folder. Click export, and now we'll be able to bring this signature back in just like we did before with those other logos I showed you and use the same techniques to incorporate it over the top of our photo. So let's open up a different photograph and let's suppose that I want to add my signature to this. So all we need to do is just come into the edit section and again, we're going to add a local mask. Click add, texture, and come and load your signature. And here we have what we just saved before and we currently see it with 50% opacity and we're gonna to come to the advanced settings, come to the blending mode and because all we want to see are the darker pixels, we're just gonna to come to the darken mode, perhaps crank that opacity up so that we can see our signature better and we can select place texture and just rescale this as we would like. So I'm just gonna bring this down to the bottom right hand corner. And once you're happy with it, just close that down and what we can see here in this view is never the actual finished render of the file you're working on. But if you zoom in to 100%, Luminar will actually just show you a little bit better what that is going to look like over your finished photo. So that's a budget option that will certainly identify your work as your own. No one else has got your signature. But wouldn't a better way be, rather than putting your signature over your photos, I think a much more professional looking way to do things is certainly to have your own logo and incorporate that as your watermark. If you haven't got a logo already, I'm going to share with you a really good way to get some branding, which just really looks quality and is very cost effective. So let me show you that. OK, click on the link in the description and you'll be taken to this amazing logo maker. Now, when you're here, all you need to do is type in your photography brand name and then all you need to do is click make your logo and you can add a tagline in this section here. So I'm just going to write photographer and click next. Now I want to select my industry. So I'm going to start typing photography. And then within the list, we can see that they're catering for all different genres of photography. So I'm just going to go with photography blog channel. You can choose to include a particular element into your logo. So perhaps that might be a camera, for example, but I'm not going to, I'll just click next. And on this next page, this is really cool. You can define your brand's personality. So I can say that I'd like a particularly modern look. I want to keep a nice balance between accessibility and a premium service. Somewhere between fun and serious is pretty good. We'll keep the logo on the more simple side and traditional innovative. Ah, I'm happy with a nice balance between the two and I've just clicked next. And now we get this adjusting colors, get ready to see your logo. And just like that, you're presented with a whole array of different options for your photography business. And this is just really, really cool. So many different options, but if you're not happy with the options you've got here, and um, do bear in mind that each one of these also has variations as well. So let's say you're drawn to this logo here. We have further variations that we can select from as well. So you really have the opportunity to choose something that is unique to your brand. If after looking through all of these options, you decided that there was nothing there that really floated your boat, you can actually come down and come down to edit your brief and you can go back through the options that we filled out initially. So we can alter the definitions that we gave to the, uh, the algorithm to actually calculate these logos. So if you just move them around a bit, make my logo, they'll match the style, refine the fonts, adjust the colors, and now we've got more options to look at. Um, I'm not sure what this design is here, just above the Anthony Turner, but I actually really like that one. I also like this one to the left as well. I think that's pretty punchy as well. So once you've found one that you like, just click on that logo. You're then presented with some options of what your logo will look like used in different media. And that's really useful just to get a sense of the logo and how it will appear. If you're happy with it, you can buy and download the file. 
And if you're wanting to use it on Luminar only, you can buy the PNG version, and this is 43 NZ dollars, which for a logo design that's already done for you, that's an absolute no brainer. But if you're serious about using this logo for your branding going forward, I would recommend getting the professional option because that's going to include stuff for your website, for print media, social media, basically anything you can think of where you'll need your logo, you're covered. So there you go guys, after being asked multiple times in the comments how do you put your logo onto your photos inside of Luminar AI, well hopefully this video has covered it for you and if you don't have your own logo yet, hopefully by showing you that logo maker it's introduced you to a really cost effective way to really get a quality piece of branding for you. That's it for this video guys, let me know what you thought of it in the comments and if you'd like to learn something about Luminar AI, something that's just been bugging you and you think I might be able to help, also let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Cheers guys, catch you in the next video.